fast martial arts lesson, we're gonna talk about the best weapon for street fight self-defense or the best weapons. I'm gonna give you my top two choices. Now, some of you are gonna say, well, it's gonna be a gun, it's gotta be a gun. I'm not gonna say that. Just because a lot of places you can't carry one. A lot of places in the world, you can't carry one. A lot of places you carry one, you can go to jail, you get arrested. Uh, even if you have a concealed carry, you can't go into the bank, you can't go into the police department, you can't go certain places where you can take the gun in other places. So when we talk about street fight self-defense, we're talking about martial arts weapons that you can carry. And I wanna go over a couple real fast. First is a knife, and this is a trainer knife. So this is not a sharpened knife, but it's a real knife. People say, is that a real knife? Yes, it's a real knife, but it's not sharp. It's made out of aluminum. This is really uh, common and popular in the uh, Filipino martial arts. This is just a trainer. So we use this a lot to practice all of the techniques where you're striking, stabbing, slicing, all the things you would do if you were knife fighting. And sometimes you fight with a knife, fight with two knives, fight with a knife and a stick. And then there are all kinds of different shapes of these trainers. And so this is a really good choice, but again, you can't take this in a lot of places. You can't take it through a metal detector. If the police stop you on the street, pat you down, and they find this, especially with the length of this blade, concealed weapon, uh, and not this one. Obviously, this is a trainer. You wouldn't be in too much trouble for that. But if you had a knife this size with this size of a blade and it's sharp, that's a weapon. You know, if you've ever flown, they take these off of you. They take the little pocket. They weren't doing it for a while, but they take a little pocket. I lost two. One this year and one at the end of last year going through TSA. They took my little Swiss Army knife that I like to have to, uh, you know, it has the toothpick on it and all that stuff. Anyway, so you can't really carry a knife in a lot of places, but I'm gonna hold on to this. I'm gonna show you later as we talk about how to defend against the knife. Street fight self-defense, you should have some good options other than your skin and bone, your hands, on defending against uh, a knife. You can get sliced up. You might get cut anyway, but it's better than getting it stabbed in you and losing your fingers or bleeding to death, right? All right, so this is something you can buy. They sell these on Amazon, and I think it's one of those things where they've snuck it in but this is actually an expandable baton. These are really common in police departments. A lot of police departments still carry these. I carried one of these when I was a military policeman in the, military, in the Marine Corps. And um, so I've used this, I've practiced with this. Uh, not this particular one, this is a version of it that I got, again, through Amazon and they sell it under like a glass breaker safety device, but it's basically an expandable baton. This one is a hard rubberized plastic with a metal core. It's got some weight so you can hit, but it's not nearly as strong as my favorite one. And big problem with this one, it's not allowed. It's against the law in a lot of American uh, municipalities, city streets, or cities, uh, counties. It's also some states have made this completely illegal. Some countries are not allowed to carry it because this is considered to be a weapon or a deadly weapon. So. This is definitely, and people ask me all the time, what about expandable baton? That's a great weapon. And it can be, anything can be a great weapon. Someone said yesterday, the best weapon is here between the ears or whatever, right? I understand that. Elbows, knees, right? A good punch, learning how to move out of the way. That's your best weapon. But we're talking about martial arts weapons that are uh, sticks, knives, not a gun. We already talked about that. But just the basics, this kind of stuff. And people ask me, you ask me all the time, what about? about expandable baton. It's not on my list because I cannot carry this in the front of my car. In some places, some cities, I get caught with this anywhere in my car. They're gonna take it away from me at least, write me a ticket or a summons or whatever. And in some, some places you can go to jail because it's considered a deadly weapon. For a while, when I first got it in the mail, I had this sticking in my, uh, sitting in my console in my truck and I remembered, oh, I shouldn't do that. I looked up the local laws and yes, it's listed, no police batons or police style baton. So this is out, you can't take this anywhere. It's not a good self-defense weapon. The knife is out. The next thing, um, you know, so we have uh, what? The long staff, the baton, uh, bow, the Japanese bow. We have the Joe, we have the walking stick. I love those, those are my favorite, but I see these as kind of a version of those. And so the next one, this is number two on my list. We're getting close to what I want to show you as the top. And these are the Kali sticks, Screama Arnis. They have a lot of different names. They all mean basically the same thing. 
the length, because you ask me this all the time too, how long should my collie stick be? I put a link in the description below if you want to get a pair. About as long as your arm from your armpit to the tip of your finger, about that long. These are super effective. They hit extremely hard. You have a lot of, a lot of leverage, They're extremely durable. These are made out of rattan. You're gonna hold it here so a little bit is coming out of the bottom. And you can also use that to jab, to strike, to clear, pull, pop it out of somebody's hand. And I'm gonna show you how to use them before we get to my number one. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put one in each hand. I want you to see how to use them so that you can choose for yourself, make up your own mind, whether that's a weapon that you would carry for street fight self-defense. So you're gonna have a little bit here on the end. And like I said, that's so you can peel a weapon out of somebody else's hand. That's also to jab, uh, hit them with it, strike them with this side. Gives you a little bit more leverage without uh, risking losing it. So if you go all to the end, you can peel out of your hand easier. Here, you've got a little bit more leverage. Start with one in each hand, and you're gonna roll forward just to warm up your wrists. Let me switch a little sticky sticky up there from the tape. So I'm just gonna roll the wrists. Elbows are gonna be in and close to your body. You just drop it to the front, comes back and around. So this is just a basic warm-up spin, and then I want you to reverse that, and you pull it back. So you wanna get blood flowing into the wrist, especially when you start to hit. If you're gonna hit a bag or a stack of tires, if you're gonna hit a tree, practice with another person, you wanna have limber joints. You wanna be warmed up properly. So you're gonna go forward and back. My basic rule is 30 seconds in each direction, and then just kind of mix it up. Go forward a couple times, go back a couple times. And then put it on your shoulders and down, and you're gonna to start to lift up and back. So now, you warmed up your wrists, you're starting to warm up your shoulders, and the more you straighten that arm as you bring it up, the deeper into that joint you're gonna go. That means you're gonna get more flexibility. If you have any shoulder issues, it's gonna make your shoulders a lot stronger. One of you told me last week that your shoulders have almost healed themselves, spinning the bow. I have experienced that too. The bow staff using the collie sticks like this especially really helps heal that fast. Anything you have going on in there, you're gonna heal it up. And it's simply because more blood gets in there, plasma gets in there, things heal faster that way. Movement will heal your body. You just gotta get up and move. All right, then add that twist down and the twist up. Remember this twist, this is the beginning, warm up for the wrists. So now you're gonna twist down, twist up. And this is not just for the wrists and the arms. It's gonna to start to get your heart rate up. You're gonna to start to burn some fat, get leaned out faster. And after all, if you're gonna be doing self-defense, you wanna be fighting fit. You wanna be able to move fast, explosively. Every strike in self-defense, you should be trying to end the fight. And the only way you're gonna get there is to train, get stronger than you are, and every day you should go for just a little bit more speed, a little bit more power. Don't let age be an excuse or inactivity. Write your own story and then get to work, right? So it's a spin down and a spin back up. Start to bring the arms up again. So you get a bigger range of motion. Up and down. Then from the shoulders, uh, it's good to see you again. From the shoulders, it's like we see each other every day, right? <laughs> we're, becoming, we're becoming close and tight. I like that. So you go forward, it comes back. And I really do appreciate all of your comments, by the way. Not just in the chat, but also on the videos, in the comment section. So you're going forward, you're going back. Yes. Forward and back. So this is the same as when you went down and up. And I was saying this is good for your overall body. It's not just for your, good for your wrists, which it is, elbows, shoulders, but also it's good for your brain. It helps keep your brain elastic. Brain elasticity is the key to staying healthy longer because when your brain is more flexible, you don't get stuck in dogma, right? You don't get stuck in uh, uh, negative opinions that keep you angry and PO'd all the time. Thank you. So we're going forward, we're coming back. One, two, one. 
two, and then I want you to try to split. One, this is all just warm up for this weapon, this self-defense weapon. And I'm gonna get you right into the strikes. But it's always important if you warm up, it only takes two or three minutes too. Two or three minutes doing this, your body's warm. Your hands, your wrists, your shoulders, tendons, everything's gonna be safe from injury. But take the time, do the warm up. And this is, this is, this is a little bit more complicated, but this is what I want you to work up to, right? I don't wanna say it's hard, so don't try it. I'm not gonna ever tell you, I don't want you to feel challenged. I want you to feel really challenged and then grow, right? I want you to uh, get outside of your comfort zone. You don't grow unless you're outside of that comfort zone. All right, so now you're warmed up. I'm gonna have you do one strike with just the right hand. The left stick, just put it on your shoulder just to keep it out of the way. Put your right foot forward so your body's smaller. From here on out, for self-defense, you fight with principles, not just techniques. The first principle is situational awareness. Pay attention to what's happening around you. Number two, get in a better position. In this case, you have sticks in your hand. He's got a knife. There are five or six people. It's a group. You're caught off guard. You have these in your backpack. That's where my other pair are, by the way. They're in my bug out bag, my get home bag. When uh, uh, Pooh hits the fan, <laughs> I had to think of my word. My, uh, I, I get what WS hits the fan bag, when stuff hits the fan bag. So I have, um, you know, all the, the regular stuff, clean water source, uh, food blanket, um, signaling devices, light device, uh, how to make a fire if I get stuck out in the woods. But I got these in there too. So this is my pop it out real quick, one on the shoulder, and now I've created distance between me and the threat. So I'm gonna move some of this stuff. That's a hint. Look at that, that's, uh, that's my bayonet. I've been talking a lot about the bayonet. This is one of my bayonets. This is the first one, right? Actually, I think this is my father's bayonet from like Vietnam era. Look at that. Still sharp, still <laughs> extremely sharp. And uh, you know, original thing, pops on the belt. It doesn't fit the molly belt for those of you guys who know what a molly belt is. But it fits the old style, um, we call it a 782 gear, I forget what they call it, but just a regular belt. But that affix goes to the end of your rifle. And here's the point, here's why I have this out here. Because so many people, I wanna show you a kick or two every once in a while, right? I wanna show you what happens when your stick falls out of your hand or you're firing and you're all of a sudden your stick breaks and then you got to go hand to hand because in the military we're taught right you have all these different weapon choices but then they run out of rounds they run out of bullets <laughs> and when your rifle your m4 or your m16 or whatever you have or had runs out of bullets you fix the bayonet that means if there's a little attachment there goes on the end and now all of a sudden with your rifle you're fighting this way but then the thing breaks the bayonet will break off the rifle breaks in half i've seen it with my own eyes because i was a military policeman in the desert 29 palms right during uh what was it the first gulf war desert storm all these guys were going through the cag i think that's what they call it combined combined arms combat exercise cacs that's what it was anyway but they had a bar out there for some reason out at the temporary base in the middle of the desert in California, 29 Palms outside of Palm Springs, they have this bar and these guys are out there for two weeks sucking de uh, sand and dust down their throats, practicing, getting ready to go for war, you know, their fear. And it turned out to be a different situation. But at the end of those two weeks before they ship over to Kuwait, this is 20, what, 30 years ago? Anybody there? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Um, they let them all get drunk. <laughs> And they took their, their rounds away, their bullets away, but they all still had their M16s. And I saw guys more than once take that M16 by the, uh, what do they call it, the, the hand guard, the thing that keeps your hands from burning on the actual barrel, and just wham, and brain the other guy, hit him straight in the face, hit him in the head, skin coming off. Guys trying to block it, their arm just get like wrapping around it. My point is that when you run out of bullets, then you use your rifle without any bullets. And then, you know, and hopefully you're using it right and you're not using it at the bar and you're not doing it because you've lost your temper or you're just being stupid and you're drunk, but maybe because you're trying to save your life or your buddy's life, that's usually what it is. And then you lose your rifle, you take off your helmet, bash, and you're bashing them with your helmet. Then you lose your helmet, you got blood in your eyes, can't see anymore. And then it's, it's all hands, 
knees, elbows, feet, baby, and you're fighting, right? So I believe that if you learn a martial arts weapon, you should also learn how to throw a couple of good punches, get to the side, good punches, get out of the way, how to move your body a little bit, how to move in, how to move out, how to throw a straight kick, maybe a good round kick to the shin or the knee or the thigh, maybe how to throw a couple elbows in, out, down, cross, whatever it is. Use your head a little bit. That should be the last resort, right? Uh, protect your operating system. They shut that off and you're in trouble. All right, back to the weapon. So you got one on each shoulder. You're coming through here and through here. Angle one, angle two. Angle one, angle, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I didn't make it up. It's, uh, it's been part of, of war, fighting, all that stuff since the beginning of time. And now these days, if you're really serious about being able to protect yourself, your loved ones, your family, your children, your, your significant other, a stranger in the street who doesn't deserve to get picked on and beat up, if you want to really be able to protect yourself, you're out there, you're looking for this. You're thinking about what kind of weapons could I use, right? He pulls out a gun. He pulls out a knife. I just have my bare hands. Maybe, you know, it's better than, that you know how to throw elbows, close the distance, get out of the way, duck, move, come in. If you have a stick in your hand, it's a little bit better. Now you have some leverage. He's got that knife, that trainer that we had before, and the blade's this long. My stick is this long. I have the advantage now. He can have his knife. Except for, I saw this one guy yesterday because I've been throwing knives again. So I watch other guys to see what I'm doing wrong. And um, this guy's like, throw your knife, boom, and then run. And I thought, well, if I fight that guy, I'm in big trouble. Because <laughs> he's sticking that knife in pretty thick, pretty deep, right? Uh, anyway, I digress. He's got the knife in his hand. He's coming at you. If you have a stick, yeah, hit him in the hand, hit him in the face, hit him in the leg, but hit him somewhere. Um, so targets, lethal spots, eyes, ears, anything that removes their ability to breathe or to see or to hear, these are all the vital spots. Some things will kill you immediately, right? Some things are, um, yeah, but it's, it's your choice. It's like uh, people say all the time, um, I had this conversation with someone last week. Why don't, why don't they train the police to just shoot them in the leg? Because it's a center double tap. <laughs> If you've been law enforcement, uh, when I, that's how we train. Everything was two shots, pop, 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 pop. And if you know anything about like a nine millimeter or 45, which are horrendous, it goes in small here and it just takes out a chunk like this big in the back. They're not gonna recover from that most of the time. But a police officer is not sh uh, trained to shoot them in the leg because if it goes down, it hits the ground, it goes across the street, hits the little baby in the, uh, with his mom who's shopping at the Gap. Right? And it, I mean, it, it's just, that's, you're not trained to shoot the guy in the leg. You're not trying, you know. And, and sometimes people, and they defend themselves. <laughs> they, they figure that one out and they've done that in their house. But wholesale, people aren't designed that. So if a guy's got a knife, I don't want him to close the distance. Especially if somebody is, has the knife who knows what they're doing and they've done it before. Especially like somebody who's been in the pin and comes out and he, sh he knows how to shift people. Because those guys, they know how to close the distance as soon as possible to hold you in and hit vital spots 30, 40 times, and you're done. You're not coming back from that either because they're not going to get in there and sew all that stuff up. You're just going to bleed out, and they probably hit the right spot to make that happen because they've done it before. That person especially, I need to create some distance. I'll kick, I'll knee, I'll do whatever. And then if they do close the distance, I'm trying to trap that uh, knife to first to them. And if I can't get it trapped to them, I'm going to trap it to me. And then just to the death, I'm just as hard, as vicious. And most people don't understand this concept of self-defense, using the concept of violence. They're using violence against you. You've got to use violence against them in order, especially when it's that case of the guy with a knife who's trying to close the distance, that case of the person who's trying to take your life or harm your loved ones or whatever. You have to get out of the mindset that it's some kind of boxing match or some kind of jujitsu match or some MMA cage match. It's not a competitive event. It's not, it's, it's super simple. And this is what's so liberating about it is that you don't have to be physically in better shape than your attacker. You just have to understand 
Targets, what are your targets? His eyes. You put your thumb in my eye, I don't care how strong and big I am, I'm going back, right? You um, smash the nose, you smash the mouth, you go elbow in to my throat, and you hit that and you start to crush my larynx. You crush my larynx, I'm gonna asphyxiate. That means I can't breathe, I'm gonna die of not being able to breathe before medics can get there and save my life, before the cops can come and scoop me off and take me to jail. And that's what, this, what we're talking about. Um, kind of like, but, but not real, not like on the street. I've been uh, half, uh, half ass, half ass attacked by a knife by some punk kid. I was doing some, uh, some training with some people and this kid just kept mouth and mouth and mouth and mouth and, and he whipped out his buck knife and I took it from him. And I, ha I, I still have it somewhere. And I hog tied him and threw him in the back of this bus. Um, I forgot about that. That was funny. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but this is a kid who just oh, mouth, mouth, mouth. He, he, did, he, he probably didn't know what he was doing. He was more afraid of me. But um, he, he pulled it. He got it about this high. And I punched him straight in his face, which was, you know, you don't, if, you, if you mouth like this, and you know, most of you guys know this, a guy who runs his mouth, I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. You don't have to worry about them for the most part. Right? Good, good for you. I understand it too, I know what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, so, but when they mouth off, those are the ones that, the, the, you know, the pop in their chest and your face, they're usually as afraid. Sometimes they're talking themselves into it. And, but if you can stay centered and you know you don't have any other choice than to fight, your only choice is for self-defense. You're gonna to have to physically defend yourself. You get in a better position first and you tell the person back, and you're saying it not just for him, but for yourself, turn it on, get ready, flip the switch, tell everybody else around you, all the idiots with their cameras out trying to get a uh, film so that when it goes to court or it goes in front of the, the authorities, the people that be, your hands are up and you're saying, stop, man, back up. And you, and you said it like you meant it. You weren't playing around. Back up, get out of my face. Don't touch me, I have every right to defend myself back up and then they don't you're gonna you have to hit him first this is what I'm trying to say the kid goes to pull out the knife before he gets the knife out to open the blade he opened the blade he pulls it out he's opening this blade and and I thought in my head instantly if he pulls that if he goes to put his hand here if his hand comes out I'm hitting him straight in the face as hard as I possibly can I don't care if I smack I don't think I thought all that just as hard as I can and and I did and it was shocking to him and he went down and um, took his knife and hog tied him. And then later, I don't think I ever gave, I don't know where the knife is. I've moved so many times since then. But I remember keeping it and thinking, you know, he doesn't deserve to get it back. It was a nice knife too. Anyway, um, but, but he wasn't like a seasoned knife fighter or anything. I didn't fight anybody with a knife in jail. And it terrifies me thinking about it. Like, I don't think there's any way I wouldn't get like all shivved up. Uh, well, he had, he had been to, he was, he was, uh, um, he had been in Iraq. He was, he had to be like 25, 26. I think I was probably early forties. Uh, I don't know. I think I can still picture his face though. <laughs> I don't remember his name. I, I, I picture everything around the event. It was a, a specific time in my life that I, that I, that that happened. And like I said, it was a, it was a bunch, it was in the military and, um, yeah, stupid stuff like that, right? Uh, and, and, that, and that, for me, like, that's still stupid. You're still going to get cut. But I'm talking about, like, some of these situations. Like, if you ever watched some of the prison, uh, prison footage that the guards watch and the guys who've made their homemade ship, and they come out, and they, I mean, they are vicious. That kind of stuff scares me. Like, um, that's where I would hope that I was concealed carrying at the time. But, yeah, and, and, and ideally... If you pay attention, situational awareness, and it doesn't solve everything, but that's huge. Pay attention to what's happening around you and don't go in a situation where that's gonna be a possibility. That doesn't mean that takes care of every situation. It could happen, but if you're prepared, if you've trained, it's better than if you've just watched television and binge watched Netflix and ate garbage food and sat at a desk job for eight hours a day for the last 25 years and then watched TV seven hours a night, eight, slept, you know, you have an hour, and this is most people, most people have an hour of activity, 
where they're washing their body and they're walking to the, the crapper, the pooper, uh, the toilet. And then they're feeding their face. And that's their full activity. And you know what I'm, ta what I'm talking about. That, that's like the average American, average European. They're spending it, it's seven to eight hours, 10 hours at work. They're commuting, sitting, and then they, they're on a device, whether they're watching it on their iPad, phone, whatever, television. And then they might drink a little bit and they eat a little bit and most of them are stuffing their face. While they're watching. And now it's worse, right? Because we're all stuck inside and everybody's depressed and everybody's nervous and worried. And then the, the rest of the time they're asleep. <laughs> they wake up to go pee in the middle of the night. That's their like 10 steps a night. Anyway, my point is this, that's not you. You're going to prepare because when that happens, it, 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 people that say, you know, fight or flight, either fight or you run. There's a third one, and most people do the third one. They don't fight, they don't flight, they freeze. You fight, flight, or freeze. Most people, they have this, they're just shocked. They're sh they should be. Like, oh my God, how is this happening to me? I can't believe it, right? It's like the people who drive in because of their looky-loos, and then they get in the middle of a protest where their demonstrators smashing stuff, and they're like, oh, they're on my car. I can't believe they're on my car. What are they doing? They could have <laughs> turned left instead of right. They could have map quested on their phone to find an alternate route home or whatever. And I'm not judging anybody. I'm just, you just know what I'm saying, right? All right, back to the sticks because I want you to see you have basic angles. Angle down, angle up, and then you have horizontal strikes. Just bring it in and through, straight down, and you can also jab. This is what, the jab, you can turn it the other way. This is also a jab. These are, think about eyes, nose, throat, right? And jab here, you turn it in, jab here, straight down the middle. And, the, and you asked me um, what happens if you lose your collie sticks? Are there any application? And a lot of the FMA guys, they do blocking and striking at the same time. It's similar to the Jeet Kune Do in many ways where they're, they're, um, they're using both hands, like they would use two sticks. And they're blocking while they're striking and they're doing the, you know, the hubad lubad. And if you know anything about that, they're doing that. But don't overthink that. If you want to look, look at it from a very basic self-defense perspective, not get hung up on technique, think about angles, angles of the body. And you think about, again, your targets. What are your tar targets? Eyes, nose, temple, ears. You take your hands, bam, to someone's ears. I don't know if you've ever had it done. I've had it done. Someone boxes your ears because they're fighting you or they think it's funny. I've had it done more than once. One time um, I lost hearing for a little bit because it, pop, it can pop, boom, all that air forcing in really fast can pop your hearing out. Um, the throat, either cutting off blood flow to the brain or cutting off oxygen to the whole body and then they're done. And this, you know, when, when someone does like a choke hold, unless they're an idiot and they don't know what they're doing and they do it wrong and they use this part, some people do that. That's not a choke, by the way. This is how you choke someone out. Don't try it. Um, but you close the, the uh, arteries, carotid artery or whatever stops the brain, brain, uh, blood flow to the brain, that's when the guy goes to sleep. Um, a lot of times when people do it wrong, they're using this part and they crush, because this will break the, the larynx, the voice box, the throat will break under just a few pounds of pressure. And then once it breaks, they're dead, unless a medic's right there and can intubate them, stick the, the, you know, the thing down the throat so they can breathe. The airway is crushed, they're done, right? But that happens, people, even stupid, you know, college kids drunk, military, Marines drunk, stupid people pulling like this uh, behind the guy and then, right? And someone asked me, someone's got you like this, they got the choke hold on, what do you do? And I wish I had someone here to show you, but you just take this hand and you dig it right in there, as close as you can. If you can work it up, if you can get it right there on that thumb, get it on the thumb, but just pull down a little bit. It's like pull-ups. Another reason for you to do pull-ups. Pull-ups, right? This, these muscles. This guy's got you from behind. You're coming here. You've got to get this hand in here and get that pressure off the neck as soon as possible before you go out. Just put that in here, and then there's, there's a lot of other things that you can do. But this is the very first step. If I had four arms, I'd show you the rest of it, but you were asking me, how to, and I told you, I'd just show you the first part. Get it, I don't care where it is. Get it here, here. The closer you can get that to the hand, the absolute, you know, the better it's gonna be. If it's a BJ pin, 
an MMA black belt, uh, Gracie black belt from Hawaii, and he's on your back, you're going out, right? If it's Dean Lister himself or uh, Jocko Willink, dude's a beast, by the way. It, it, the, the, one of those guys has got you in the, the, the chokehold, you know, unless, you, unless you're also an MMA guy or a BJJ or whatever, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you're probably going to go out. But that's just the basics. Now, let me talk about my favorite weapon for self-defense, street fight self-defense, martial arts weapon, is the walking cane. And before you shut off, you're like, I'm never going to walk with a cane. That looks so weak. You can take it everywhere. It's so effective. This thing hits harder than my collie sticks do. This costs nine bucks, right? Nine dollars, <laughs> free shipping because I have Amazon Prime. The only complaint I have is this keeps flying off. I keep forgetting I'm going to Gorilla Glue it on so it doesn't come off. It's probably going to come off in just a second as I show you. Um, when he's got you like this and you do this, no, it's not going to snap your neck. And if, you, if, if they're trying to choke you unconscious, if it's, if it's like an idiot and you're at a party, you know, uh, we all, uh, yeah, we all um, do stupid things, right? I'm too old for that, that stupidity now. But when I was a young, stupid guy, I did all kinds of stupid things. Um, the only reason I took the knife away from the kid was because he wouldn't shut his mouth and he kept running and running and he kept popping it out and he was waving at uh, uh, some of the other uh, soldiers who were sitting there. And I said to him, I'm like, if you take that out one more time, I'm going to take it away from you. And he was like, yeah, I'd like to see you try. And bam, uh, hit him first. Always hit him first. But no, you're not going to break your neck. But my point is it's better than, than um, whatever, than doing nothing. All right, so walking stick. And I'm going to sh uh, show you like I did with the other ones. Just a few of the basics. This is a warm up, and you want a warm up again to get blood in the joints. This is going to uh, make you squeeze your stomach. Ah, oh, man, that's idiots, right? <laughs> then you ask yourself, why am I with this idiot at this party? All right, was it a party? I'm assuming. I'm assuming you guys were. That's why when I got out of the Marine Corps, I tried to go into. Uh, try to go to college after the Marine Corps. And it was like, they start doing that hazing stuff. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and, and here's, I talked to a kid about this the other day. He's like, I did all this Krav Maga. I know all this Krav Maga, this Krav Maga cool. And um, we know how to take the gun away when the guy holds it like this to your face. And I said, if you look at the, the video of what really happens in most shootings or stabbings, you don't see it until you're dead. You don't see it until it's too late. Um, or and they, you, sometimes they don't see it at all. People don't know they've been stabbed 12 times, 20, 30 times until it's way too late. Because when they come in, it's, they get this close. And again, it's because people who really know what they're doing. Yeah, I'm gonna show you here in a second. They, 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 they know how to do this. If a guy wants to shoot you in the face, Boom, boom, boom. As he's pulling it out, he's not holding it there. Put your hands up. Give me all your money. That's the movie stuff, right? That usually doesn't happen that way. So you might be a, an IDF, Israeli Defense Force badass who really knows how to crop McGollum, you know, and all that stuff. But there's, it's, it's usually not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. It's, and that's what happened. Young Marine Corps, you're a young Marine military policeman. You know, I was at the back gate one time, and there's holes all in the wall from the guy the night before who was practicing, boom, 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 his quick draw. We all do stupid stuff. And then, you know, he loses rank, and he's no longer a policeman. But, um, but people do that. They put, they're like, what, what did you do now? And they forgot there's a round in the chamber, and, they got to, and then they shoot the guy dead. Stupidity. But in real situations, the guy pulls out the gun, so that's why situational awareness, again, is number one. Pay attention. Stay out of places where you're going to get hurt, if you can. If you can't, be prepared. Always be prepared, no matter what. All right, so take it anywhere. Take the police department. Take it on the train. You'll be sitting with it on the train, on a plane. It's not only is it going to make you leaner and stronger, but it's going to get you into the habit of sliding it through. Yeah, oh, yeah. And this is why I like this weapon, too, for, uh, for groups, right? Now... Strike. 
this is how a trained person usually comes at a person who strikes. They have this big wide open thing, right? And they're coming in like this, big, huge swing. And if you know anything about fighting, you've ever been in a fight, that's when you, yeah. Yeah, or at least go with a good friend who knows how to fight. Um, that's when you can close the distance, you can disarm somebody, you can see this coming a mile away. When you fight, I want you to be behind your weapon. So all of your strikes are gonna be really tight. And that's so that you can hit here, you can hit here, you can hit here, you can hit here, and now you're able to defend yourself much faster, much faster, much better, and less chance they're gonna take this out of your hand. Now, if they grab hold of this, you twist. Twist and push. Imagine that I'm, this is your, your cane, and your hands are here, and I grab it in the middle. You twist it, and you push down here. You're, you're gonna strike me in the head, and see what that does to my wrist? That just locks them. Same thing, if I do it the other way, it just, it breaks down my grip. I can't hold it. Now, but if you try to pull back and forth, I do a lot of pull-ups, I just got done doing my pull-ups. I might be stronger than you, so, but if my hand's here, I wanna go like this. You twist it, and if they have a really strong grip, push it toward them so it comes toward them, or pull it back toward you, either way, and then they're gonna react to whatever you do, and then twist, and then smash down to the head. Yeah, that's the truth. All right, so you get in a better position, and in this case, you put, this is the threat, threat between you and, or the stick between you and the threat. Now from here, it's the same exact angle strike that we did with the collie stick. Bring it down, bring it down, you can bring it up, bring it up, bring it through, through, and then from here, I like to come in, that's that rifle, right, that bayonet strike, and then here's the back of the rifle, and that's the butt strike, the butt of the rifle. So when you hit, just coming from here, see how it comes to the shoulder? One, two, three, four, bring it straight across, straight back, and then straight in. And then if you have to, you use the other side. Now the hook here, the crook, there are a lot of really fancy things that I can't do because I don't have a partner to show you. But just imagine that you grab and pull, that you lock, and you can pull down, you can get the leg, you can go between the legs, you can go through the neck, forward. And so there are a lot of things that, yes, I'll try that. So that you, you, can, you can lock it in, you can pull, you can do a lot of things with this if you have to. But I like this basic concept of self-defense being situation awareness, better, get a better position, put the stick between you and the threat. Ask yourself, what are my targets? If the targets are the eyes, straight in, straight in, straight in, straight in this way. And most direct, so direct, immediate, explosive, or immediate, explosive, direct, however you want to think about it. Immediate means don't hesitate. When you know you have to fight, if, like I said before, if you can go first, hit them first. If you're here, back up, I'll defend myself, and they're not backing up. Immediate, direct, explosive, direct means you know, that whole thing, shortest distance between, or between two places is a direct line. This is it, man. Just straight in. That, that means I could try to do a whole hop keto cane thing on them, or I could try to do um, all the twists and turns and lock them up here and bring them in here and put them that. But most fights don't go down like that. The guy's closing distance. He's going to high school tackle you to the ground, or he's going to MMA tackle you to the ground, and he's going to ground and pound your face and maybe he's gonna pick up a chunk of concrete and smash your brains in, or two or three of his buddies are. So while you're in there trying to figure out your fancy small circle jujitsu takedown with your uh, crook, and it's not a criticism, this, for me this is more esoteric. This is the beauty style of martial arts. This is get home to my kids, to my wife and kids. This is my kids are right with me, and I'm at the gas station, and I had this sitting on the uh, seat of my car, which is my reason it's number one favorite self-defense martial arts tool for street fight self-defense. I can take it anywhere. And I don't care if people think, oh my gosh, that guy uses a cane. Isn't he too young? Is something wrong with him? They could think any, I don't give a shit, right? Or excuse me, I don't know why I'm getting so cussy on this video, but you know what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter to me. It's more important that I have the ability to protect my family, right? Yes. 
And I just, and it's just sitting there. And so sometimes I get, I get my gas at the cheapest place here on the way, but between here and my uh, house, <laughs> thank you. And uh, salam. Uh, but um, it just sits there. So I get out and, and there's some unsavory characters, some uh, baddies or whatever, and they're walking around. I said, this morning I was putting cash in the bank, putting cash in the bank. And I'm in a place where there's shootings and robberies all the time. And I look in my rear view mirror and a guy I didn't notice when I was driving up is closing on my car for a you know, real true story. And I make eye contact and I smile at him and I look at him with this look in my eyes that, you know, I, I will defend myself. And I don't know if he, he meant anything bad or if he wanted to use it next. As I drive, drove away, he walked back to the corner where he was, uh, I, don't, I don't want to say hiding, but I think he was hiding in this corner. He chose to walk away from me um, simply because I made eye contact, situational awareness. It's like, he, well, he can't catch me off guard now. And, and I drove away and I'm fine. But as I'm looking at him, I reached over and I have my cane. I'm starting to pull my cane because I'm thinking, all right, the guy comes at the window. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm getting ready to drive. I'll get out of there. All that stuff, right? So, but, but that's the point. Pay attention, situational awareness, and then immediate, direct, explosive. And then the last thing that you have to think about is the fight's not over till you win. And every strike, you're trying to end the fight. But stay there. I want to show you one more thing. This is an exercise band. You can take this exercise band and put it on your cane. And this is kind of a stronger one, but I've been working out, right? So you slide that over your back. And now all of a sudden we're all stuck at home because of this stupid COVID stuff, but we want to get a good workout in and you want to be strong enough so that if someone gets in your face, close quarter combat, you take this thing and you just shove them straight out, right? So now practice slow, nice and easy. And then you push it out and you practice turning and in, turning and in, and then explosively. There are a lot of different things you can do with a band and your cane. I found about 20 of them. I'm gonna make a cane band workout video for you next, or at some point. You put it behind your bum like you're gonna sit on it. And now you're practicing curls, working on the arms for that hard uppercut when you have to knock them out when you've lost your cane and you can change your grip. So the palm goes down, same thing. By standing and doing it, it forces you to engage your core, get a long, lot stronger. If you put the hook, make sure the hook's facing away from you. Step in the band, depending on how much resistance you have in your band. You can loop both sides and then just practice lifting straight up and then change your hand grip, do five more, 30 seconds for five, so whatever you wanna do. But now, not only are you getting a good workout in your arms, but in your shoulders, chest, back, core is engaged, but you're developing the strength, dynamic strength, so that when you do have to defend yourself, you're stronger every single day than you were the day before. And one of my favorite, uh, I'm gonna call him a mentor from now on, because I went to his course and I watched his videos, and I feel like he's mentoring me, even if he doesn't know he is. This is Pat McNamara, Pat Mac, T-Max Inc. Some of you guys have seen it. Uh, grizzly looking dude, but he was, he's really not. He's really polished. He acts like he's not. Uh, no offense, right? Uh, I know a lot of guys like that, but he's a uh, smart dude. He does a lot of shit. He was a uh, Delta Force operator. Yeah, Delta Force guy. Went to one of his shooting courses. If you ever get a chance to, do it. <laughs> Totally worth it. So much fun. He also teaches combat, uh, combat, like workout, combat strength training. And he does all of this cross body stuff and st things I've seen before, a lot of it, but a lot of new things that guys always think can come up with new, new ways to, to fight. Basic, basic fighting, but practical, all practical. What works? He only focuses on what works. And that's what I like. Just, you know, if you're going to learn how to defend yourself, it's got to be practical. I don't want to wing chun punch somebody. Nothing against wing chun. I'm not gonna wing, I'm not, I'm not gonna one inch punch Bruce Lee somebody. Nothing against Bruce Lee or the one inch punch because I love those from an esoteric sense. I love Aikido. Aikido is my favorite martial arts of all time, but I wouldn't want to use it in a street fight, right? And it's not to say that it wouldn't work. I might use some techniques from Aikido or some concepts or principles, 
but immediate direct explosives. Two basic punches get to the way. But Pat says, uh, if you cloned yourself today, would you be able to kick your clone's bum, he uses the other word, tomorrow? And that idea that you always, 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 always have to be moving forward. And if you're not improving every single day, you're starting to decline. In, in martial arts, we always say, um, if, if you're not growing, you're dying, right? So, yeah, and, and here's why. The style, the technique, there are a million techniques in martial arts, probably. I don't know how many. There's grappling, striking, weapons, open hand, or non-weapons, no weapon in your hand. There are, there are so many techniques in martial arts. There's no mystery, though. There's no mysticism, and there's no... Um, yeah, I, I, and, and like I said, I, I love, you know, right? I love it because it's a great workout. I like to teach it. Some people want to learn it. So I've taken classes. I like hubad lubad. I like doing the elbows. I like doing all this stuff, and it's so good. I mean, it's, but it's for me, it's esoteric. It's aesthetics. It's, it's pretty. It's fun to learn. It's pra practicality, and, and again, it's not to say I wouldn't use any of those techniques, but you have to shift. It's like tactic and strategy. You have to shift to your strategy. Your strategy has to be principles, situational awareness, better position, make your body smaller, protect your organs, protect your vital spots. Um, get in this flinch block, let them hit your arms. You'll naturally flinch in the right position to defend yourself. And then ask yourself, what are the targets? Take a deep breath to center. Because when it comes to fighting, you have to go fast as you can, as explosive as you can. You can't afford to slow down, so you need to calm down. Don't slow down, calm down. Uh, it's like a race car driver going to the turn. They can't slow down to where it feels comfortable. They got to go fast in the turn without flipping their car. They turn their head first. The car goes there. They take a deep breath first. Every great martial artist, every great athlete whew, uses that breath to center. So you take a deep breath. What are my targets? And then it's full commitment. Every strike. Am I going to remove his eyes? Am I gonna, his ability to see, his ability to hear, his ability to breathe through his nose, his ability to breathe through his mouth, his ability to breathe, period. Am I going to destroy his solar plexus? Am I going for the ribs? Am I going for the groin? Am I going to take away his ability to chase me because I'm going to break his knee? I'm going to break his femur? Am I going to go for his leg? I'm going to kick his foot, break his ankle? That's all targets. So each one of those requires a different technique, and they change constantly. Maybe it's three guys. Maybe it's two over here, one over here. Maybe you're fighting this guy, and you realize someone's right behind you getting ready to smash your head with that brick. They picked up off the street, just out of nowhere, right? And all of a sudden, this guy's coming here, and you know you wanted to do a Wing Chun punch, but now you got to do a side kick or a back kick, or you got to turn, get in your flinch block, drive the elbow through his throat in the fight. Whatever it is, you have to constantly shift and change. So, yeah, we'll stay away from the politics and the conspiracy stuff. Who knows? It's just a weird time. We'll all agree that it's a weird time and that we all should learn how to be nice to each other, polite. You don't have to like me, but we can be nice to each other, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the truth. That's what self-defense is. You don't have to like me, but you don't have any right to touch me. And you have to learn how to say that to yourself. You have to stand for yourself or you'll fall for anything. Stand for something or fall for anything. It's not a political thing. Invest in yourself, exercise, train, learn, experience, train with other people, ask questions, ask for what you want in life, don't let someone else dictate how you think about the life, about your world, about your experience. It's all up to you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much.